Hello. Um, have, is anyone here familiar with SGMX at all, the API? Oh, it's lucky day for all of you. Um, yes, hello. I'm, I'm Nick. Um, today I'm going to be talking about exploring open statistical data with TerryJS. Um, I work for Data61 and CSIRO. I'm kind of split between Sydney and Hobart. Technically, I live in Sydney, but I'm, but I'm around Hobart quite a lot. Um, what is Terry on? Uh, so Terry is an open source framework for ge web-based geospatial catalog explorers. Um, basically, it's a Cesium leaflet-based browser tool for looking at 2D and 3D data. Um, my team members are located in Sydney, Melbourne, and Canberra, and sometimes Hobart if I'm around. Uh, if you want to know more about us, uh, terrier.io is our, is our website. Um, so I guess as, as like examples of some of the work we do, I'll go through this quite quickly because of our time constraints. Um, National Map is kind of our flagship map. Um, launched in 2014 to support Australian government open data policy. Got 14,000 data sets on there. Um, get about 30,000 sessions a month. Um, and then we've kind of started moving into the digital twin space. Um, so this is some work we've been doing with New South Wales uh, Department of Customer Service and Spatial Services. Um, so it's kind of more of a focus on bringing together 2D, 3D, 4D geospatial data with building information models, um, kind of trying to integrate, you know, Internet of Things sensor data into those into those 3D models. Um, we've also been working with the Queensland government, um, kind of similar way. Um, our, late, our latest project is with Victorian government. Um, so this is not yet public, but will be by the by the end of the calendar year. And you kind of see some, it's a bit hard to see, but some pretty amazing data sets that the, the state have got. For example, this like massive um, archive of, of photo realistic meshes. So they've taken their historic aerial imagery and turned it into 3D meshes. And it's, um, yeah, it's awesome stuff. Um, something's probably a little bit closer to home to everyone here. Digital Earth, Australia and Africa. Uh, so this is... Um, kind of a map that, that shows off all the, the work that Geoscience Australia do with their Open Data Cube. So turning Landsat central um, satellite imagery into kind of analysis ready data and then they've got all these other uh, derived products that you can look at. Um, maps with SGMX, so two maps at the moment. Uh, national map, which is showing off um, Australian Bureau statistics data. Uh, we've also got Pacific Map, uh, so that's that's in collaboration with the Pacific Data Hub and Pacific Community Secretariat. Uh, as far as the kind of formats that, that Terry supports, I mean, the talk does say kind of integrating open geospatial web. Um, there are kind of five different categories here. So you've got imagery, so tiled services, vector data, 3D data, tabular sensor data, and also data portals. Um, so, I'll, so I'll just quickly run through some of these. So the bold ones are the open source ones, so the, the important ones. So imagery, obviously you have web map service, web map tile service, so on. Vector sources, web feature service, GeoJSON, Mapbox vector tiles. 3D sources, because it's a cesium based library, mostly, mostly cesium 3D sources, so 3D tiles, terrain, GLTF, um, tabular sensor data. So CSV, SGMX, uh, Sensor Observation Service, Socrata, all quite closely related to how, how we kind of handle them in Terrier. Uh, portals, and so by portals I mean you can point Terrier at these specific services and you can actually use it to discover data. So you can point it at a CCAN, for example, and then you can search through and, and discover different data sources. So what do I do? I don't know what's happened there. There we go. Um, I'm a software engineer um, focused on 2D data visualization, so vector, raster, tabular, sensor based data, and also those API portal connections, um, which I guess is why I'm here talking about SGMX today. So, what is it? SGMX, I'm going to have to stare at the screen so I don't get this wrong. SGMX, which stands for Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange is an ISO standard designed to describe statistical data and metadata, normalize their exchange, and improve their efficient sharing across statistical and similar organizations. Sounds like a lot of fun. So SGMX is sponsored by seven international organizations, pretty hefty organizations, so it's a pretty well-supported standard. Um, as far as SGMX, what it is to me, I'm going to be talking about it from a data consumer perspective. So someone that is making calls to an API to get data. 
not really data producer, data modeling side, not so interested in that. Um, so there's kind of three main points for me is, 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 is what SDMX means. How to discover and organize data sets, how are data sets structured, um, ideally before having to download any data, uh, and then also finally downloading subsets of the data to visualize on a map. Um, so as I said, there are two sources there, uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics API and also Pacific Data Hub. Uh, there's also a bit of technical information about the versions that I'm using. Um, and obviously I want this stuff to be working in a map, in a web browser. So there's a few limitations there as far as, you know, how much data can you download? You want to limit requests to a server, all of that kind of stuff. SMX for you. So why would you be interested in this? Well, Australian uh, Bureau of Stats have just released their new API, which has got all of their public census data. There's a lot of stuff on there. Um, also Pacific Data Hub, so I've got a screenshot of that. Heap and heaps of data sets there um, from, from lots of different org organizations. So a massive wealth of data that's been published um, through this API standard. So uh, it's a bit hard to see, but that's fine. That's the information for, for that's the information model for SDMX. So each box kind of represents like, like a, a class or an entity within the SDMX model. The pink, the pink stuff is what I'm actually going to be talking about. So this is the stuff related to data sets, data structure, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the dark blue stuff is more to do with data providers and all that, which I'm not, I'm not super interested in. So I won't be talking about any of that. So I'm going to quickly go through all of the different components that are relevant to me and most likely relevant to you for SGMX. So data flow. A data set conforms to, a, to business rules of a data flow. A data flow will contain annotations, description, name. A data flow will then use a specific data structure definition. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So a data structure definition is built up of measures, dimensions, and attributes. Measures, just values that you're actually interested in, observations. Dimensions are uniquely identifying characteristics of data. So this could be time or something like that. Um, attributes just kind of give you additional information about the data. So each of these can kind of be thought of a, a, as a column in a table. So here's a data flow example. It's quite hard to see still. Um, so this is from Pacific Data Hub. This is their international merchandise trade statistics. Um, and so you've kind of got different columns there. This is just in a tabular, tabular form. You can also get it in JSON and XML, but I'm assuming no one wants to see that. Um, so the pink columns there represent dimensions. Uh, the red is a time dimension, still a, still a dimension, but it's kind of handled a little bit differently. Uh, the blue column there is the measure, so the actual value that we're interested in, and then the yellow column is, is in their attributes. Um, so as far as trying to make sense of this data, because obviously it's not sense at the moment, it's just a bunch of codes, um, each dimension, measure, and attribute has a concept. Um, and so this, can, this starts to kind of describe what all of these columns actually mean. Um, so can, each concept can, can be four different things. So a code list, so that would just be some kind of enumerated list of values, for example, country codes. Uh, specific data format, for example, time period is just four characters for a year. Specific range of values, so just numerical values between some minimum, maximum value. Um, or you can also just have just generic types of values, for example, text. Um, so enumerated dimensions will have a code list. And so this is a, a predefined lookup list of all of the possible values that, that some column can have. Um, it also maps these codes to nat natural language, language descriptors. And so you can also have multiple languages there. Uh, for example, countries, AU equals Australia. Um, so, yeah, simple example. Um, you can also have something called content constraints for a data flow. And so this is starting to specify um, kind of what what kind of data you can actually find within a within a data flow. So it would usually specify some subset of possible values from a code list. Okay, so now I'll actually start kind of going into what each of these columns means. So the freak dimension has a concept called frequency. It has a code list called common code list for data frequencies, and then you've got a translation from the code to human readable name non-periodic, periodic, annual, quarterly, and so on. The data flow also has a content constraint, which is saying that frequency only has two possible values in this data set, annual or monthly. 
Geopict is another dimension. And so this is where we're starting to get into the spatial realm. So this is a this is a code for Pacific Island countries and territories. And you can kind of see how the codes translate into the actual country names. Uh, one more dimension, indicator. Um, this, is, this, this is used so we can figure out exactly what that indicator column means. So you've got an indicator concept. It's got a code list there. AMT um, translates into amount. Um, and then you've also got those other options there. Um, as far as everything else, I'm just going to skip over some of them because they're not that, that interesting. Um, so some of those columns have a little underscore T there. That's just total. So it's, it's just kind of not really specifying anything for that dimension. Um, you've got OBS, OBS value, which is the value that we're actually interested in. Unit measure um, is just the units. So it's just saying that those, ob, 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 in this example, it's just saying that those observational values are in US dollars. Uh, unit multiply is just an exponent, so we have to multiply all those values by a thousand, so ten to the three for those for those different rows. Um, unit measure, unit multiply, and observation value are part of a common sustainable development goals set of attributes, um, which are kind of shared by most SGMX organisations. So it kind of highlights how SGMX enables these organisations to share massive amounts of data with each other. Um, if you're more interested in that, just Google SDG. DSD. Uh, there's a lot of information about that. Um, I'm actually just going to skip that slide. Um, okay, so now we've got an inner map. Um, I've mapped all of those different things I've talked about to, you know, a map and a few different UI elements. So you can see that the time period column has now been mapped to this little time selector thing. It's got that red outline around it. Uh, the frequency and indicator dimensions have been mapped to drop downs with, with human readable names. Uh, the unit measure has been shown in the legend there, and then you've finally got the observation values. Um, and so because we have all of, the, all of the, the different elements of SGMX, like code lists and content constraints, we can now render these dropdowns with actual values that you can look at for a particular data flow. And this can all be done without actually having to download the data, because if you, have, you can have data flows that just have millions and millions of rows, um, you could have 50 different you know, dimensions and attributes. So you really want to be able to pick certain subsets of that, of that kind of multi-dimensional data cube to see on a map without having to download all of it. Um, so I guess there is one step that I've kind of skipped here. And so that's kind of going from that tabular data to something you can actually see on a map. Um, so in Terrier, we call this region mapping. It's just kind of your, your, your usual isochrone mapping. We're taking rows in a table. We're matching them to um, region geometries on a map. Um, and so this is all vector tile based, so it's quite fast. Um, Terrier has about 100 different region sets. So all of the ABS stuff like statistical area, you know, one, two, three, four, LGAs, that kind of stuff is all just supported. Um, how am I going for time? About 13 minutes. Okay, I might quickly skip over this. So as far as being able to discover data sets, I've, I've just kind of covered the, the bits of the information model that, that describe data sets. But as far as being able to organize these data sets into a tree-like structure or something like that that people can search through, um, there's a few other kind of components of SGMX that help us do that. Um, yeah, so I mean, basically you've got agencies, for example, ABS would be an agency, um, then categories and categorizations. And so it lets you kind of turn these data sets into a tree-like structure. Uh, for example, you've got ABS topics census data by region. These are category schemes. And then you've also got these types of categorizations underneath. And so it lets you kind of go through these different groups to, to discover data sets. Uh, we also get a little bit of data flow metadata. So you've just got a description there. You've got a link to methodology and you can obviously export the data too. All right, demo. So I'll give you an example of, so this is, this is national map. Um, I'll give you an example of, of being able to discover data sets. So in the social and economic group, we've got this abs.stat here. And so this is talking directly to the abs API. And so you click on that, hopefully it works, it does. Um, it's now gonna pull all of those different categorizations. Um, and so then you can click through and, and find something that you're actually interested in. Uh, for example, 2016 census, um, I want to look at time series profiles for SA2 and above. 
Uh, we'll just look at some population data. There we go. All right. So now we have it on a map. Uh, there's a few different things we can do now. Uh, so we've got a few different dimensions here that we can change. So if we want to look at household composition, we can just pick a different one. Uh, we'll load that up. Um, we've also got different geography levels here. So this is something that, that, that ABS do. They publish all these data at different different levels. So if, you want, if you're more interested in SA4, you can just change uh, and everything will swap. Um, so another thing that we have here, because this is a time series data, we can start flicking through the time slices. Uh, we can also just click on, if we're interested in a particular statistical area, we can just click on one and we'll get a little time series chart there, uh, as long as, uh, along with all of the metadata that, that the SUMX service provides. And so we can start to do a few things with this. Um, so Terrier lets you kind of expand charts. Um, so if I've got that, now we've got Hawthorne, this is Melbourne. Um, obviously, we've got the the number of, of um, persons from two family household with only family members present for the census. It gets pretty, some of their descriptions are a bit dry, but there you go. Um, so we can now click on another one and, and sit that on top. And so we've now started, we're starting to, we can start actually comparing these different regions over time. I've picked a bad example because it's got a very big name, so you can't actually see the the key there, but yeah, as you, you know, you can just kind of keep adding stuff and it lets you kind of compare different different regions. Uh, this also works for different data sets too, if you want to start um, doing comparisons there. Um, so all of this data is downloadable, so you can just download it. It will give you a CSV, um, so you don't actually have to worry about calling, making all those calls to an ABS STMX API yourself. Um, you can also export the data flow with the current dimensions that you've selected there. And that'll just give you a, a, a CSV too. Um, so I guess as far as some other things you can do, um, I'll just go into the Pacific map stuff. Um, so we've, we've added a few extra features to try and improve just visualization of these statistical data sets. Um, so for example, in Pacific region, um, Papua New Guinea is obviously larger than the rest of them. Um, and so you're getting this value that's just bloating the, the color scale there. So you can't actually see any of the other countries' values by time. Um, so we've added some basic outlier detection. Um, so if you turn that on, you can see that it's highlighted as an extreme value. Um, and then you can kind of look at the other values um, to, to get a bit more of an idea of how they compare to each other. Um, so this is just basic kind of Z filter Z filtering, so it's just looking at standard deviation of the data sets and just height flagging values that, that are kind of outside of, of the mean by a certain number of standard deviations. Um, what's another thing I could show? I guess another thing we have is this splitter function. Um, so this essentially creates two copies of the data set. Um, and so it means that if you want to compare, for example, these are population projections uh, in the Pacific region. Um, so you can now drag this slide across and see how it's changed from, so at the moment it's, I've got 2050 on the right and 2000 on the left. Yeah, and so then you can still, you can click on a data set and you're going to get that little time series chart too. Um, everything's exportable, um, CSV, which makes it quite easy to, yeah. But um, yeah, it's a ma like massive, massive amounts of data here um, that's all searchable. Um, and I guess because it's Terrier and you've got all those different formats you support, you can start overlaying different things. Um, so I'm sorry, this is quite a crude example, but I couldn't come up with anything better. Um, so this is looking at, I've got um, 100 year, one in 100 year expected um, flooding event in, in New Norfolk area. Um, and so then we can start looking at um, social disadvantage and maybe you know starting a conversation about which areas we should be focusing on um, as far as as, as, as impact from flooding. Um, and so ABS published these um, social economic indexes for areas um, data sets and it goes to statistical area one so it's quite it's one of the mo more high detailed um, data sets that they have. Uh, so I'll just drag that on top. Um, so I can be like, I can kind of select which index type I want to look at. Um, so I'm going to go social economic disadvantage. Um, they also have a few different measures. So something that you might be more interested in is rank within state. And we can just look at 
percentile. Um, if it loads, there we go. And so now we can start to zoom in and play with these data sets and, and identify potential regions where there may be an issue uh, due to flooding. And, and you know, obviously, if, if there's the particular regions with more social disadvantage, we're going to have to, you know, funnel in more resources to, to combat that in the future. Again, I apologise for the crude example. This is the best I could come up with at the time. Um, I think um, I think that's probably it. Yeah, um, I've got a few links there. Um, so if, if anyone's interested in learning more, look at those. National map, Pacific map should just come up if you Google search it. Um, those are all open too. It's all quite new. So, you know, if you're interested in this stuff, please send us your, your feedback. Yeah, thank you. Change over now, but be ready that we can actually do a problem with the international presentation and the 